Hey, how you guys doing? It's your boy, Everything by John. I'm here with the wonderful Professor Barrage here at Mega Evans College. And you already know that I made a specific video on the college itself and why I love Mega Evans College. So you can go check that out. But anyway, I'm here at the beautiful Newsfeed Cafe here on Notion and Church. Come over here and support. All right, we're on 1507 Notion Avenue. You can come in and support. All right? So anyway, I'm here and um. I have a topic I want to discuss, and I kind of briefly discussed it before, but now I have someone with a, with a scholarly background, education, uh, uh, African-American female, uh, and, and I want to get her perspective on it. So tell me about who you are, Professor Barai. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to be here. This is fun. Uh, my name is Shonda Baraj. I am a um, multidisciplinary scientist. I've got backgrounds in biomedical engineering and geography and international affairs. So I've been kind of all over the world with um, scholarly stuff. So right now I'm teaching introduction to research methods at Maker Evers along with a couple of geography courses. Wow. So this is his project. So he's yeah. trying to get an A <laughs> in my class. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Of course, yeah. Um, wow. So that answers my first question which was basically about her background in Obviously, you can see she's well-traveled, well-spoken, and everything else. So that's another reason you should go check out my Meg Evans um, video, just to see the kind of talent we have in the community. <laughs> yes, right? Meg Evans! Yeah, Meg Evans, man. You know what I'm so anyway, um, so just to be clear, my topic is, um, we, we talked about the other day, uh, just the, the, the two words, black beauty, right? So me, I, I thought about it from another perspective of, um, what we see, you know, in the, in, the, in the recent, you know, I say decade, of the, the shaming and the modernization in negative light and uh, profit, and none of that is on our community. So I have Professor Barash here to uh, just kind of have her perspective on. It. So on the topic of black beauty, um, how do you feel about black beauty in this uh, day and age, and 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 how do you see it in the public's eye? Okay, well, that's loaded. But first of all, black women are the most beautiful women on the planet. That's right, that's right. That's number one. And there should be no reason for shaming, especially when it comes to hair. I've seen that over the past, you know, 10 years, with, especially with the natural uh, hair care movement. Yeah. It's like, you know, we should not overlook the fact that we as black women are so versatile. You know, we can go natural, we can perm, we can do whatever we want with that hair, and if it falls out, we can cut it off, let it grow again, but we can curl it, braid it, you know, fry it up, whatever, it doesn't matter. We have that versatility, and that's something that God gave us that I believe he didn't give anybody else. And so we should celebrate that, you know, celebrate, you know, the, the fact that we can do whatever we want. Um, as far as, you know, beauty within itself, you know, yeah, there's been European standards and I know for myself growing up, it was hard, you know, I was always comparing myself to my, my schoolmates, you know, Caucasian schoolmates and they're flipping their hair and they're da 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 yeah. and they have, you know, skinny yeah. bi bodies and can get into any clothes and right. I'm like, you know, my thigh is too big, you know, and you're like, you know, you, you stress over that. Yeah. You, know, you spend a whole life stressing over how you look and this is like, no, we need to take that back. You know, we have shape, we have curves, we have, you know, this sexiness to us that a lot of women just don't have, and we need to celebrate it. We need to walk in it. Right. <laughs> you heard her here first, and this is so true. I mean, you know, it, our underlying factor, one of the underlying factors is just that, that love, that we're lacking, mm -hmm. solely lacking. Every day, you know, we, we have so much... Um, so much energy, so much different passion and talent within ourselves, but it's just not reciprocated the right way. And I feel like that's why we kind of get taken advantage of, you know, in, 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 in the least amount of, to say. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty deep. Um, <clears throat> and in terms of profits, now, yeah. I thought about, you know, all different types of things. We, when we talked about in class, I'm thinking about Kylie Jenner. I'm thinking about Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about all these different celebrities that's profiting off of our, our butts, <laughs> our, our images, our yes. curves, our yes. likeness, mm -hmm. and we're not getting any piece of the pie, or let's just say, 
barely anything crumbs compared to what they're making. Mm -hmm. For example, Kylie Jenner is quote unquote uh, worth about a billion dollars. Most wow. of that, and I kind of looked it up in terms of um, mm -hmm. audiences. Fifty-three percent of that support is in the black community. So when we look at that, if we can cry or not, well, I don't want to say cry, but less of a word, but if we can complain about, you know. These people are making, you know, profits and this and that, but we turn around and they're supporting. Just like in this community here, for example, in Flatbush, for example, um, everywhere you go, you see black faces. But who's owning these uh, these properties, these buildings, mm -hmm. these uh, stores, these companies? It's not black faces. So that goes to show you, that's kind of like a, a mirror image of just the industry, uh, black beauty, for example. So how do you feel about <clears throat> the, you know, the profit of black people in terms of hair products like you just explained, right. uh, curves, people getting surgery to look like us and everything else. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? It makes me sick to my stomach when I see the amount of the struggle that we have financially. We have kids to put in college, we have bills to pay, and but when we go to get our hair care products or our, our skin care products, it's usually owned by another ethnic group that's not ours. And that particular ethnic group is not really returning that many into to our communities. They live and work in our communities, but they're not investing in our communities. And that makes me sick to my stomach. And I feel like we got to figure out a way to take that back, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, just to give you a quick story, real quick. Um, it's so funny. A few years ago, a couple of females told me that I should sell here, sell bundles. I'm like what the hell is a bundle, right? But I found out all, all that, what all that was, and I started selling hair. <laughs> so it used to be bundles by John, for example, bundles by John Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you know, being an entrepreneur that I was, you know, at that time, I was just going into it, you know, just because it was like a, it was something that I guess untapped for African American man. And then I started going into these little beauty stores and started seeing in the front they have the, the nice uh, black girls in the front, but in the back. It's the Korean guy, it's the, it's the Chinese guy, it's whoever, uh, right? And, and, and that's how it is, right? So I always thought to myself, even if I wasn't the one selling, why can't you in the, in the store, et cetera, et cetera, why can't you do that? Why can't you have that mindset to open up your own store? And, and I see a few people doing that. Mm -hmm. I see a few people doing that. Um, but that's just a small percentage within that industry itself. Mm -hmm. Like, just in general, we have to understand um, entrepreneurship is, is just is the key um, but I don't know I'll no longer do that but yeah you know that's just that's the, but the whole mindset the whole uh, the, the thinking process of that either way yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I just want to mention that so um, I didn't want to add because I think that maybe what our community really needs in is like an incubator that provides people like you, especially your generation, with the tools to, to start these businesses, to, to take over the supply chain of hair care products and whatever skincare products and, you know, African, Afrocentric clothing, you know, gets, and just, you know, monopolize that thing, yeah. you know, and, and learn, we can learn how to market it and learn how to manage our money and learn how to distribute it properly and, you know, things like that. And if we did that, um, maybe we could kind of, we, we have power over our product you know, for the first time. I don't, I don't know if you guys just heard that. That's, <laughs> that is so beautiful right there. To, to have an incubator. Now, we should have that for every industry. Mm -hmm. We should monopolize every industry that takes our likeness, it takes our image, and, and everything else. Right? And from the roof. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. that's something definitely to talk about. So if you're yeah. watching this from Mega Evans, uh community, whatever, we should come together and, and, and make that happen. Um, and last question. Um, I want to make this short too, too, too long. Do you think an underlying factor in all of this is the fact that at the end of the day, we just are not business savvy and have that mindset of acumen to get involved? Yeah, that might be the case. I think that one, one area we, we struggle in is the fact that we don't have like the, the rich uncles to, to give us the, you know, the trust fund or the to, to guide us in the particular um, av the avenues to, to for success in business. And I see many other races and societies, they're groomed from birth 
to like, you know, either take over the family business or to go into a particular area and they provide up those resources. And we're kind of like, we're going to, we're trying to figure out everything on our own. We're struggling to get through school. We don't know the answers to the right questions. We don't know the questions to ask, you know, and we're, we're kind of floating by ourselves. So yeah, we need some type of, uh, so along with the incubator, the incubator should serve as like a mentoring program for a youth, I think, from a very young age to help them start thinking about how to um, be financially independent and become entrepreneurial, better our communities. That's excellent. I actually seen a post out there that said, uh, and it relates to exactly what you just said, it said uh, basically um, the whole point of the parent is to be or uh, have their kids in a position where when they turn 18, mm -hmm. to have a choice whether they want to keep going to school or start yeah, right. a business or whatever, instead of mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know, you're going to have to go get out there and get a job <laughs> right. to support. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, that's exactly what you just really need to. So, yeah. man, what a great interview. Thank you so much, Professor Baraz. Wow. This is, <laughs> this is the type of talent we have in the community that needs to be showcased more. I'm telling you, man. Mega Evans, I already talked about it. The community in general. Shout out to uh, Newspeak Cafe and the beautiful owner that's behind me right here in the camera. I see you. I, I even get you. So, um, wow. So, uh, so yeah, keep um, continuing to like, share, support, and um, I'll see y'all in the next video.